In this class, we are going to discuss how a C program source runs on an operating system. We are going to look at the stack, the memory, and the operating system all in details. So, the first thing is when you write a C program or C plus program in an editor, it, you edit a file, C file, for example, hello C, and then the preprocessor takes the header files and then sends it to the compiler. The compiling uh, compiles the C file to an assembly file, hello.s and then hello.s gets run through assembler which generates a hello.object file. Then the linker takes over the object file and combines the libraries to generate a hello.exe on disk. Finally, the loader takes hello.exe plus the, the DLLs or the SO files and loads them in the computer RAM and then the system operating system runs it on the CPU. So let's look at the steps in more detail. So we have a source file, preprocessing, compiling, assembling, linking, loading and running. So inside the details if we see uh, the link editor basically has to fill in the addresses because in the O file the addresses are left blank or are relative to the start of the code and finally when the loader loads the file it gives actual memory location to the program again it has to put in the actual addresses into the into the exe file because the exe can be placed anywhere in the memory so when a program has to start jump around it has to use either relative address or addresses have to be defined by the the loader. Let's look at the commands needed for each of these steps. First you need GCC minus E to run only the preprocessor. GCC minus capital S to create an assembly file. And then you can also use GCC minus C to get an object file. And on Linux you can uh, read ELF if there's an ELF format file to look inside a ELF object file. On Windows, you can do a dump bin. It comes with a Windows MS Dev compiler to dump what is inside the O file. The O is an object file. And let's look at the memory contents. Uh, when a exe is loaded to run in, a, in the RAM, you have the stack, which contains the local variables and the return addresses when you make function calls, and the heap, which contains the globals and the malloc memory malloc is allotted in memory at runtime and then a static data and the actual code is called the text exe dll so and finally below that lies the kernel so here's the os and kernel low mem memory addresses on top of it is the user memory and user memory consists of the text segment instructions the initialized data which is when you say some static variables then there's an uninitialized static variables and there's a heap growing towards high end and from the high end the stack growing growing downwards so you have limited memory at runtime it's not like you have unlimited memory so what does the memory consist of let's look at more details so it has a stack the dll libraries the global data and the functions so if you look at the memory location the low memory address uh, the Below there are the libraries, the main.o, file.o, print, printf.o, these are in some library.a file and that's called a text part of the code and it's statically linked and or it could be dynamically linked, it could be in a DLL. Then there's an uninitialized data like you say in integer y equal to 0, these are global variables and there is a there's something called a BRK, break pointer, where the free memory in a heap, unallocated part of the heap is pointing to. The heap has malloc, calloc, and new. So this, this is a part of the memory that gets used by the heap. And there's some free part of the heap. And when you allocate a malloc, the break pointer moves up and down. And then there are other libraries also, shared libraries. So they're mapped into your process. So they're actually shared with other processes like malloc and printf, the standard C library is used by almost everything else on the system and is basically mapped into dynamically linked at, at runtime, at load time and above it is the 
stack. The stack is uh, and it starts at the, the top with a system uh, function call. When when you finally return, this is a system address, and then your environment is loaded. Then you push the arguments, and then you push the argument count. Then you jump into main. So main will allocate its variables and push them on the stack. Then main if main calls a function that gets pushed onto the stack, and then the stack keeps going downwards. And eventually, if you have very deeply nested uh, function calls, you'll run out of stack space. So that's a memory of a running program. So let's look at stack frame. So every time you call a function, a new stack frame is created. And every time you return, the stack frame is deleted and we go back to the previous frame. So this is the stack space. And the stack pointer is pointing to the top of the stack. And currently you run the active frame, data frame n. And below it is the another function call and you got called from n minus 2 and you got called from n minus 3. Start with n minus 3, call n minus 2, n minus 1 and n. Inside each one there is a, a pointer to the previous stack frame. So you can go up the stack frame in dynamic, uh, the dynamic programming languages. You look up for, for variables on the stack and they would follow the stack pointer to look for a variable in the parent's data set data uh, and the local variable in the parent and this is the current variables in the current function local variables and when you return this stack is free then local variables uh, all vanish and only the return value is returned to the parent so what's in a frame on the stack your local variables the parameters and the return address so the register typically that I use for return address is the EB EBP, the extended base pointer. BP used to be the 16-bit pointer and EBP is a 32-bit pointer. And a 16-bit and 32-bit wide. And then put, pop, pop will actually uh, move the stack uh, upwards and push, will put it, push it downwards. As you can see, pop goes upward and push downward because stack is growing downwards out here and then at the bottom of the stack is the ESP the extended stack pointer it's the bottom of the stack ESP points to the various stack starts it's, and the whole thing is called a segment a bunch of memory pages which is a segment in which you can which, which is allocated to you and then in the stack whenever you make a function call space is allocated for local variables and then if you want to call another function you, you push the parameters under the stack and then jump to the function and push your own address and a function will pull the address out of uh, the local the, the calling parameters from the stack and then compute something and then look at a return address and jump there and then the whole frame will be cleaned up when you return from a function so let's look at example when you say push a b c d it's a four byte data four byte is a 32 bit uh, wide stack so registers word size is 4 bytes so the stack is uh, 4 bytes wide and you have addresses like x x minus 4 x minus 8 and the stack is growing downwards and ESP is this extended uh, stack pointers here and then after you push a b c d on the stack so it gets pushed onto ESP moves downward and then the stack pointers updated and EB, ABCD is stored on the stack so let's see example of a function call suppose you have a, fun a C program called uh, function A and then there's a, there's a main function in main you have two, some autom automatic variables I and K then you call function A with 1 and 2 and function A has parameters X and Y and local variable s and t it returns 3 back to the main function which is ignored by the main function and the main function returns 0 so let's look at the stack what's on the stack so on the stack we see okay the f this is a inverted stack drawn reverse from the last uh, diagram so the main when the main is called the, uh, the vari uh, variables are saved on the stack and then the number of variables is saved in in arc C number of argument count is saved on the stack and then the return address for in lib C is pushed out here so when you want to go back from main you this is address 
and e EBP0 is the starting of the base pointer. It's called a base extended base pointer. So because the stack pointer keeps moving up and down during a function call, it's hard for a function to remember where the stack starts and ends. So they use another pointer, uh, register called EBP to point to the starting of this, the function frame pointer. It's also called a frame pointer so that you can compute, uh, your, find your uh, variables on the stack with respect to the EBP. But nowadays, the good compilers can actually manage with just ESP and just remember how ESP is moving up and down. It's more difficult, but it's harder to debug code in, with, with the base pointer omitted. Then EBP. Then uh, there's a main variable, automatic variable, which should be I and K will be stored. Then parameter uh, 2 will be pushed, then 1 will be pushed, and then uh, return address in main will be pushed, this point, the function A then EBP is pushed also and then you call into function A so function A's uh, automatic variables would be SNT will be pushed in the stack so when it returns uh, actually function A would return a value 3 in the, in the A register A E A X register so that's a normal procedure it's a lot of data to return it will use uh, a somewhere in the memory and the stack or the memory specifically allocated memory to return more data or pointer to a data so you can see the EBP base pointer stack pointer move up and the stack is decreasing up upwards in this slide so let's look at another function call in which case it's going downwards the local variables the arguments the return address and then the old frame pointer FP is a frame pointer then the local variables and the top of the stack so uh, basically this is the same diagram inverted stack so let's look at a, a deeply nested function call how it works we have function main which calls a a calls b and c then returns a then b b calls b returns b and c returns c so a is calling b and c and returning a so we'll start from the left side and see a uh, frame for main main calls into a so the frame for a comes in and a calls into b the frame for b comes in then when you return from b the frame for a is left then a calls c so the frame for c is created when c returns uh, the frame for a is left when a returns the frame for main is left and when main returns the frame for main also goes away so that's how the stack is used for memory suppose you call B twice you won't get two different locations the, the same frame will be used again so there are many different ways of uh, passing parameters to functions C decal is the traditional way of passing parameters in C so in a C decal function call the parameters are pushed in reverse order and why reverse why not forward because then you can push unlimited number of parameters without the caller knowing how many parameters are there it would find it would find one two three and then you can have a variable number parameter you can say n if you push n out here it will look for n parameters in the stack so pushing in the reverse allows you to have variable number of parameters on the stack so let's look at it this is assembly code so how does it work you move and th this is main plus 28 28 bytes these are the addresses of the of the of the object code so 88hc9 in hexadecimal 90 9193 in hex and main plus 28 32 so 4 bytes each instruction is 4 bytes and then you first you put e ebp uh, prepare a byte of a this is a push a uh, move a into ebp plus fff so you're moving ebp is a base point uh, frame pointer and you at the top and the z this is the top of the stack you're putting 41 which is a character a then you're moving uh, put it in eax so move the same byte moves a single byte to eax the, the a then push a uh, push eax register a, the third parameter onto the stack so which is EBP plus 16 then you push 2 this is an hexadecimal then you push 1 
so all these parameters are getting pushed and then the EBP A2 and 1 are here and the current ESP moves downwards so basically it helps to read assembly code because if you're debugging you may sometimes you may not have the source code and you should still be able to understand what's happening in a function call let's look at a, another example then you have a function call to a test function this is taken from buffer overflow so buffer overflow is uh, the area where you you p pass in too much data or you pass in the wrong data to a function call and the stack gets corrupted and people are able to hack into your computer so it's imperative that you keep your uh, make sure that this, the buffer doesn't overflow when you call function you check your parameters before calling other functions so in this function we have main and you call test function then you push the parameters onto it and you onto the stack return address on the stack so ESP is here and you push a return address on the ESP and then return whatever the hexadecimal address is of the test function and then you call the test function and this is you can read on you just go to Google and type buffer overflow assembly you'll find lots of examples so let's look at one more example so inside test function what happens the first thing the, a function will do is save the previous uh, stack frame because it's going to need a stack frame to make space for itself then it will move the stack frame up by certain amount uh, so EBP is pushed under the stack then uh, EBP is copied into ESP now EBP and ESP are pointing at the same address and you are creating a new stack frame now you push EDI you, because every time you need a register you can't just use a register you got to save it on the stack EDI and ESI extended uh, source and indexing registers destination source registers are saved at some location and then uh, you subtract ESP at 20 hex from ESP that's 32 bytes so that's the amount of space you're allocating on the stack for, on the stack for your variables and buffer and then the stack frame moves downwards and then you have uh, in this case upwards and then you have more space for your current frame okay so now to to try it yourself you need to try it yourself you can write the function source code and code blocks on Microsoft Visual Studio developer or GDB and compile it and put breakpoints on the functions run it step by step and watch the stack and also look at assembly code using GCC you can use Microsoft Visual Studio to, to, to uh, do the same thing and see how the code is arranged so the, uh, for example in this case you say GCC minus S ABC dot C and then you print the assembly file this is what it will look like so in the A, the, the A where the code for A is you're pushing and moving the EBP so you're saying calling B calling C and then you're returning A so this is a comment and 97 is a hex for A and then you're popping the base uh, frame frame pointer and the main function you are making space for the frame pointer you're creating some space and then you jump into the main call main then you call A and then you move EAX 0 into AX and that means you're returning a 0 back to the caller that means no error in the function and in this, if you look at the visual C code you can compile it with CL the command line C compiler and then if you give the parameter uh, option uh, slash FA S and then it will generate an ASM file for you. Inside the ASM file, you'll see the source code and the compiled uh, assembly code for it. So you see, it's again creating a frame pointer, calling B, calling C, and moving A into into the fixed location. And this is in hex. 97 is in hexes. 61 H. Then. Uh, popping the frame and then returning zero that means no error that's what we do then we come back to the compile ABC again with FC option so you can see the uh, the COD file which is an object code file the same thing along with the actual machine code generated at each address this is absolute uh, address but you will get when you load it into memory it may change by the loader so you can see the machine code generated for following instructions and if you look at in code blocks 
this is how code blocks looks like uh, this is a stack call stack the CPU registers you can see and the source code the red dots are the breakpoints and the yellow arrow is when you're currently stepping into the code and you can also disassemble the code and see the the machine code and the addresses and the assembly code out here and it's showing you the file name and the line number and the frame start so now that you have a basic idea you try a bit and if you have any questions put it in the comments thank you